please hit that subscribe button. Hey everybody. Better suited to win the Stanley Cup this season. If you are new to the channel, the Washington Capitals, the Boston Bruins. Locked out and he scores! And we're live. Hey everybody. So we are well into the NHL offseason this year, and while the offseason certainly is far from over, I think most of the major moves have been made at this point. So, over the next several weeks, I'm going to be doing off-season recap videos for all 31 NHL teams, looking at the moves and changes that they have made this off-season. Today, we're going to be starting with the Chicago Blackhawks. So, Chicago is an interesting team. This off-season, they announced that they are going into a rebuild despite making and winning a playoff series last year. And it's overall been a really weird offseason for the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, if we look at the moves that they have made, some key additions to the team are Nikita Zadorov and Anton Lindholm, who came over in a trade with the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, Matthias Janmark, coming over from the Dallas Stars, is a free agent. Lucas Walmark, also signed as a free agent. And Lucas Reichel was drafted 17th overall in the first round of the draft this year. He is not expected to play in Chicago this season, but in the near future will be looking to make the team. Some subtractions from the team, guys that they lost. Brandon Saad and Dennis Gilbert were traded to Colorado in that trade that brought Zadorov and Lindholm to the Blackhawks. Very interesting deal there, to say the least, that I certainly think Colorado looks like the winners of, at least right now. Corey Crawford, st multiple-time Stanley Cup winning goaltender for the Blackhawks and their star goalie for the past almost decade, uh, leaves as a free agent to the New Jersey Devils. And depth players Drake Kajula and Slater Cuckoo also leave uh, the team and were not re-signed. So, it was a really interesting offseason for Chicago where they've basically said that they're going into a rebuild and and it doesn't look like they're going to be an overly good team next season. So for more on the Blackhawks, their moves, and just the overall feel of what Chicago has done this offseason, I have brought in my friend and Blackhawks YouTuber, Windy City Hockey to give his opinion and talk about the Blackhawks offseason in a little bit more depth. So, Windy City, here you go. Hey guys, my name is Nick from Windy City Hockey. Thank you, John, for having me on for your video about um, an offseason report for the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, it's been an interesting one, if you ask me not like it's not been a good one for any hawk fan we do not trust our front office as of right now we don't trust how stan bowman is working this off season and while well, we don't even trust our um interim president danny wart as of right now well they go into this off season after having a playoff series win over the edmonton oilers yes that was the qualifier but then they go to play vegas and well they do get knocked out in five games but you saw a bright light coming out of that and well the hawks we think okay this team could be a better team next season and make it back to the playoffs play good hockey well slash all that and just say we're going into a rebuild yeah the hawks traded brandon sod to the colorado avalanche for nikita zadorov and well it's a very questionable trade if you ask any hawk fan at this point you could have probably traded sod at the trade deadline and gotten more for him maybe a draft pick maybe two draft picks but no you get Nikita Zadorov and an AHL defenseman. Not that great of an offseason to start off. Then you go into free agency. And, well, you let your star goalie of pretty much 10 years walk in free agency to the New Jersey Devils for two, a two-year deal. When I saw that, that was very frustrating to say, at least, because Corey Crawford probably could have stayed with the Hawks and while well, the Hawks were only wanting to give him a one-year deal 
Stan Bowman was not wanting to budge on giving them a two-year deal. They decided, okay, we have three young goalies in the ranks. And Malcolm Subban, Colin Delia, and Kevin Lakinen. If you ask me, they're not starter potential at this point in their career. Subban's been in the league as a backup for the pretty much his entirety of his career. First starting to back up with Tuka Rask in Boston. Then he went to Vegas to back up Marc-Andre Fleury for uh, three seasons. And he got traded for Robin Leonard at the trade deadline. And he barely even played. He played a total of 70 seconds in the regular season in the Hawks uniform. And then he played the second half of the... Um, game against the St. Louis Blues before the playoffs because that was just an exhibition game so you could play both your goalies and not worry about it. He looked good in that game, don't get me wrong, but still, I don't know where he sits as a starter in the NHL. Colin Delia, you signed him to a few-year deal for a million bucks. And, well, He's looked good in his times with the Hawks, but every time he does play, he then eventually gets sent down to play in Rockford. He's looked good again. I give him credit there, but I don't think he is a starter at his um, at the level in the NHL. Kevin Lakenin, he led Finland to gold in the World Championship just a year ago, and he played well. But... The team, he now is going to potentially be a backup or even a starter in Chicago. I just don't see it. The defense, it's been worked on a little bit. Getting Zadorov, yes, that's a big presence. But you would also have players like um, Ian Mitchell coming up, who's our number one ranked defenseman who played for Denver University the last three seasons, and he was the captain of them last year. And then you have Nick Bodan ready to go. And well, it's an interesting step where the Hawks are in defense getting their team going. The offense looks good. Don't get me wrong there. They acquired Walmart and I like Walmart. He plays on the bottom line. That's okay. The Hawks just need to find their game and where they are. They're in a rebuild. I think they're more in a retool. We'll see how this goes. I think this offseason has been a failure for the team and the fan base. So, uh, it's been an interesting one, if you ask me. So, thank you again, John, for having me on your video. And I will end this off with how I end my videos off. Thank you for watching the broadcast. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already for John's channel. And most of all, let's go Hawk. Thank you so much, Nick, for coming on the channel and giving your perspective on the Blackhawks offseason. As always, guys, his channel will be linked down in the description below. Please show him some support and give him a sub. He does great Blackhawks content over on Windy City Hockey. So I have to say that I certainly agree with, with everything that Nick had to say. I can't imagine that there are many Blackhawks fans happy with their offseason. Uh, I know Stan Bowman is not very well liked anymore um, from most Blackhawks fans, and they just continue to make questionable moves. And, you know, this was a team that I think showed last year that they could compete, and, and they certainly weren't a high seed, but they were able to beat the Oilers in a series. And this was a team that probably should have been trying to compete for a wild card playoff spot this season, and now they've just said, nope. We're going into rebuild mode. We're starting over. And um, yeah, it's it's the biggest thing for me is the goaltending. I think when you look at this team, uh, they're still decent up front. I actually really like the additions of Walmart and, and uh, Yanmark. Those are two guys that are kind of depth players, but they really help round out that forward group and add to their third and fourth lines. Um, which I really think, you know, you look at their forward group, it's not bad, but then they trade away Brandon Saad, which is a complete rebuilding type move. I mean, they could have kept him and, and competed, you know, had him and Debrinka as your one-two on the wings, or you had Kub Kub uh, Kubalik there as well. 
who re-signed. I mean, th- this was a team that had some players that, that they could have probably tried to compete for a playoff spot with up front. Um, the goaltending is the big issue for me. Letting Corey Crawford just walk in free agency and bringing in nobody to replace him pr- is is pretty much the the death of this coming season for the Blackhawks. You are not going to make the the playoffs in the NHL with Colin Delia and Malcolm Subban as your goaltending tandem. It's just it's not going to happen. Neither one of them are starting NHL goaltenders. Could argue that you know, do they even belong in the NHL at all? So they're pretty borderline guys. So those are not going to be goaltenders that lead you to the playoffs. So Chicago is basically thrown this season away. Um, they've basically said we're going to rebuild and they're looking for a high draft pick next year. So uh, I, I can't imagine be, most Hawks fans are happy with this. Um, their defense still isn't very good. Um Zadorov is a bottom pair guy. He's not going to drastically improve that defense. Um, uh, just they traded Oli Mata away, although he wasn't bringing much to the table anyway. But they traded Mata. It's just it's Chicago's restarting here, and I I wonder if they're going to make some bigger moves down the line, like maybe try and move on from a Patrick Kane or Jonathan Taves, or maybe trade a a Duncan Keith. Like these are veteran guys who probably don't want to go through a rebuild. Um, and and I wonder if they're going to make a, any sort of major blockbuster move like that, or if they're going to try and just do like a two year New York Rangers type rebuild thing. I don't know. But uh, it's certainly been an interesting offseason for the Blackhawks, as Nick has said. I can't imagine many Hawks fans are happy. And um, they're probably not going to be a competitive team this coming season. Uh, they, they, they've they pretty much admitted that they're just going to go into rebuild mode here and, and try and figure this out you know, over the next couple of years and maybe infuse some more young talent into that team. But it's got to be frustrating to be a Chicago Blackhawks fan, watching them win a playoff series last year and now just basically mail in this coming season and say we're just going to restart. So... So I want to thank Nick again for coming on. Windy City Hockey, great Chicago channel, great hockey channel, so be sure to check that out. Like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, links to our Patreon merchandise store and donation link are in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.